So Alhamdulillah, we completed Surah Al-A'la last week. And now we move on to the next Surah, Surah Al-Ghashiyah. And Surah Al-Ghashiyah, like Surah Al-A'la, is uh, very virtuous to be recited. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi used to recite it in, along with Surah Al-A'la, in Salat Al-Eid, in Jumu'ah, and, and other times as well. Uh, Surah Ghashiyah is connected with uh, Surah Al-A'la in that it also highlights regarding the hereafter and two types of people. Surah Al-A'la also highlighted for us two pathways, two types of people. The people of Jannah and versus the people of fire and, and the difference. And over here as well in Surah Al-Ghashiya, Allah wa Ta'ala will uh, highlight the facial expressions of both groups on the day of resurrection. And then towards the end, like in Surah Al-A'la, Allah wa Ta'ala, as, as the, the, the entirety of the Qur'an is, is firstly a message given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The nubuwa and the prophecy of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reinforced in Surah Al-A'la. Likewise, it is reinforced and uh, he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is strengthened in this Surah with uh, the command to, be, uh, to continue being a reminder and to continue remind those who take the reminder or those who don't take the reminder. Allah Ta'ala says, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ Has the account of the event of resurrection come to you, O Prophet? هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ Has the account of the ghashiyah come to you? So he, the translator over here translated translates as whelming event of resurrection. Ghashiyah comes from the word ghashiyah which means to uh, surround something. So hal ataka hadith al ghashiyah the ulama then will define why did Allah wa ta'ala call it a ghashiyah perhaps because of the darkness which will surround people or perhaps maybe because of it being a day that uh, everyone will be busy with. Right? So it will have surrounded every person individually. Qashiyah. Allah Taala said, Hal ataka. This form of asking regarding whether a person knows of something was common at the, used, commonly used in the uh, Arabic language at the time. Al-Thalabi and Fiqh al-Lugha and other uh, books, they, they would mention that the, the, the form Hal ata would be used when uh, the who is being spoken to is desired that he may know a situation, a topic or whatever he's going to be told right now but revisit it. So the message of Allah has already told a lot about resurrection but he, Allah wa ta'ala is saying now I'm telling you again about ghashiyah, about the hereafter but I want you to hear it like you've never heard it before. Listen to it like you've never heard it before. And hadith is generally that speech which is new. It's generally that speech which is new. And uh, for the most part, what's coming in, the, uh, in this surah, the descriptions, although unique to this surah, but the, the general descriptions regarding Jannah or Jahannam has passed in other, has passed in other surahs. In, uh, in Surah Abbas and other surahs, similar descriptions have passed. Although these will be more unique to this surah. But Allah Ta'ala wants that when you hear about the hereafter, and this is very important for us because our reminders, when we speak about the hereafter, when we speak about Jannah, Jahannam, you know, what are we going to talk about? We only know about Jannah, Jahannam, the unseen, what the Messenger of Allah has told us. There's nothing that's going to be ever unique told that he never said. Right? Everything we know of is everything that he told us right? from Wahi, from his prophethood. Right? So whenever we listen to it, we should listen to it like we're hearing it for the first time with that much adab, that much etiquette, with that much paying attention to it. Right? Not just, oh, I heard it once before. Right? In the next ayah, Allah Ta'ala says, وَجُوهُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ خَاشِعَةً 
So then Allah Ta'ala talks about the first party of people and the facial expressions of those people on that day. Wujuhun yawma idhin khashia. Faces on that day shall be downcast. Khashia. This is the same word khushu' that we, work, that we use for in salah. Khushu' means to lower one's head, to be humble. Right? So, wujuhun yawma idhin khashia. That there will be faces of people that will be put down, lowered, humbled. Right? And this isn't, these aren't the believers. These are the disbelievers. Allah Ta'ala is speaking about the disbelievers first. The people of Jahannam. So khashia, if you don't, if you don't choose to show khushu' to Allah in the dunya, if you don't choose to humble yourself and worship Allah and put your head down in salah in front of Allah in this world, then you will be forced to humble yourself in the hereafter. You will be forced to take khushu' in the hereafter. It's completely different, right? The people of Jannah, they won't be people of khushu' in the hereafter. In the hereafter, they will be people of uh, high and lofty status. They will be people who will not quietly take their book of deeds, rather they will shout out when they take their book, book of deeds. They will have pride on that day. Amilatun nasiba. The faces of those people, will, uh, the translator says over here, laboring and weary. Amila means that which has worked a lot, done a lot of labor. So their faces will look exhausted. Nasiba, nasaba means to put your complete effort in something. So they will have, they will look like, their faces look like that they just did a lot of work and they've exhausted themselves in what they were doing. When the reality was what? It's supposed to be everyone in their grave, right? Rest in peace. Everyone's supposed to be in their grave, everyone gets up. But only the believers actually rest in peace. They will, the, 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 the effects of the grave will be apparent on their face. That they didn't wake up from a peaceful sleep. Amilatul nasiba. They will look exhausted from the torments of the grave. Tasla naran hamia. And then they will enter and roast in a blazing fire. Hamia comes from the word hima. Hima is the blaze of the fire. So it's the, the scorching uh, uh, you know, part of the, of the fire, the burning yeah, part of the fire. So why say blazing fire? A fire itself is blazing, right? The nar already has the hima. So why then describe it with an additional adjective hamia? So the Mufassir will mention that Allah Ta'ala wants to emphasize this aspect of it. And in the coming ayat as well, Allah Ta'ala will emphasize certain qualities of those torments that will be given to the people of fire or the blessings that will be given to the people of Jannah. So, Tasla Naran Hamia, they will enter and roast in a burning fire. Tusqa min Ainin Ania. And they are given to drink from a fearlessly boiling water. So Allah Ta'ala says, Tusqa, they will be given to drink, meaning it, they will be made to drink, min aynin, from a, ayn generally in the Arabic language refers to actually something very pleasing. That's why it's called ayn. Right? So anything, ayn in the old, older dictionaries can sometimes reach up to 50, 60 meanings. The, the Arabs will call several things ayn. Anything that appealed to the eye, they would call it Ain. So Ain was actually, you know, a pool of water. Right? When if an Arab would see a pool of water, that's very pleasing to the eye. If you see water in the desert, it's very pleasing to the eye. So that's what it's actually called. So you would think Allah Ta'ala is going to say something good. Tusqa min Ain, and they're going to be given Saqa. Right? This is their thirst will be quenched. Tusqa min ayn and they will be given from a river or some water, but that's not the case. Their ayn, the, the water that's going to be for them is aniya. Aniya is comes from uh, the same word we have al ana, which means now, right? The same word from it. Uh, aniya means when you're boiling water, and right at the moment when the water starts to boil, that's al ma ul ani, uh, the water that has just started boiling. 
So that boiling water, so then you can image now from this that the people of Jahannam will enter fire. Then they will burn and roast in that fire. They will desire that they be given some coolness. So then they see this burning water. So they see this burning water. And so then Tusqa, they will be made to drink. Now, where does the pronoun of Tusqa go back to? It goes back to faces. So the, the ulama mufassim say that the people of Jahannam by their faces will be dragged and forced into those burning pools of water, those boiling pools of water. And then there's a, obviously we know that the Qur'an has different qiraat, it's recited in different ways, seven. Uh, so the, one of the tafsir for one of the qiraat is tasqa min ayn al aniyah that they will themselves out of the desire to drink something, even though they know it's boiling water, they will themselves will try to drink from this water. They shall not have any food. Now, ta'am is something supposed to be beneficial, something that you eat it, it nourishes you. Ta'am is considered anything that nourishes the person. So, they. You would think that it would be something again beneficial, something nice. Allah Ta'ala said before Ayn, something nice over here, Ta'am, something nice. But what is the Ta'am? What is it that they will, uh, the only thing that will nourish them? It's Dari'ah, uh, a thorny bush. And the reality is Dari'ah was a plant uh, that uh, some of the dictionaries mentioned that it was a plant that when it's moist and it's ripe, then it would be given to. Uh, the, the camels and the animals and it uh, would be eaten but when it uh, passes its, its time then it would become poisonous and thorny so that's dariya so the Arabs knew what, what this was so they would be given this nothing except something similar to this this uh, dariya this thorny poisonous bush la yusminu wa la yughni min ju' that does not you know, the, the, none of these things will لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع So the, 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 the Arabs would, you know, use uh, the word yusmin to say that it doesn't benefit. Asmana yusminu means to uh, fatten something. So meaning it will not benefit in any way. It's not going to increase you, nourish you, benefit you in any way. ولا يغني من جوع Nor will it push the hunger away from you at all. Then in the next passage, Allah Ta'ala then speaks about the next group. Allah Ta'ala says, وَجُوهُنْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ نَعِمًا Faces on that day shall be delighted. So again now, looking at the faces, just the faces of these people, you would know the difference. Before it was faces of people that will be humble, put down. Over here, Naima. Uh, Naim refers to, uh, Naima means whenever... Uh, a person is comforted whenever a person or a person goes through a blessed and and a, a good time so uh, you know when when you see that a person's relaxed you can see it on their face that they're relaxed when a human being is relaxed versus stressed you can tell the difference so these people you can see it on their face that they will be relaxed why because they're actually waking up from a peaceful sleep they're actually waking up from a Peaceful sleep, and they will they will look like they've come from luxury, nuuma. They will look like they come they were just treated well, and they came from being treated well. Lisaiha radia, well pleased with their dutif, dutiful strivings in life. Lisaiha radia, for their struggle that they made in this life, they would be very pleased. Now this is something very beautiful here. Allah Tabarak wa Taala didn't say that for the Jannah that they're given they'll be very pleased. He didn't say for the blessing that they have right now they'll be, uh, you know, the fact that they're not from the other party. Right? Over here, Allah Taala is emphasizing another thing, which is that the tawfiq that Allah gave you in this life to be where you are now from the people of goodness on the day of resurrection, that alone is something that will please you. That will be alone a means for your pleasure. So when we do anything in this world, right, before we you know, get arrogant about it or high about it, we should remember what? That it was from the tawfiq of Allah. 
that that uh, energy, that ability to do anything good, it came from Allah Tabarak wa Taala. Fi jannatin alia, in a lofty garden of paradise. Fi jannatin alia. So this is you know complete opposite of the group before, which is they're they're put down over here. Fi jannatin alia, they will be in a high abode. What's the beauty of being in a high garden? It's the view. Allah Ta'ala says, لَا تَسْمَعُ فِيهَا لَغِيَةً Then several descriptions regarding their presence in Jannah. That you shall not hear therein any, any idle talk. لَا تَسْمَعُ فِيهَا لَغِيَةً Nothing irrelevant will be spoken about in Jannah. Nothing irrelevant will be spoken about or done in Jannah. Everything that is, everything that is spoken about or done is done for actual pleasure, right? not for irrelevance. In this world, right, either something is relevant, which is it's, if it's done for the worship and for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala, or either it's irrelevant, right? it's of no value. And when we are trying to bring pleasure into our life in this world, in the dunya, which makes it different from, from Jannah, why in Jannah there is no jealousy, there is no uh, malice, there is no uh, diseases of the heart in, in Jannah, because when people will take their shares in Jannah of of of, of, of the goodness of, of the water, of, of, of anything that, any blessing that Allah Ta'ala provides in Jannah, no one else is being wronged in the process. In this world, right, if you, uh, if you're taking more than you should be having, then you should fear perhaps you're taking the share of someone else. Right? It's the statement of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam that, you know, there's three things that any wealthy person would, you know, be facing. You know, and one of those things Isa والسلام, said was that you know, even if his wealth is halal, everything is fine, he's not oppressing anyone directly. If he's, if he's a wealthy person, he definitely has the wealth of another person. This is uh, you know, a deeper thought regarding uh, you know, wealth in this, in this life and, and, take, and taking benefit from the things of this life. But because in the hereafter, everything is unlimited, everything is coming from the the treasure of eternity and the treasure of you know infinite infinity that for that reason no one will no one will be wrong so no one will say anything wrong to any person then right? so the, the irrelevant speech will not be coming from jealousy or from arrogance or from anything why because those diseases won't reside there and the reason for that is that Allah Ta'ala will bless everyone with everything that they need so that they don't have those qualities and he will purify them. Fiha Ainun Jariya. There in our flowing, flowing springs. So Ain the same Ain that was used over over there on the other side, on the other party. Ain and Anya, boiling water over here is used for flowing water. Flowing water. Fiha Sururum Marfua. There in our raised beds. Raised uh, places that the people will recline. So they're also raised over here. And the cups set at hand. So the, uh, you know, you can really image this, that how this is regarding how the believers will be served. Right? Over there as well, the, the, the disbelievers will be served. However, however, what they're served is completely different. Over here, the believers are also served. And how are they served? They will be reclining on high places. وَأَكْوَابٌ And the, the cups will be at, you know, at the span of their hand. It will be placed and ready there for them to take. And in other places in the Qur'an, what does Allah Ta'ala say? That, that there are several different types of ways that the, 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 the people will be given drinks. One is that they will have it at, their, at the availability of their own hand. The cups are there, everything's available, they'll take. The other is that the angels themselves will come and they will, uh, they will uh, give them a drink. And then there's, uh, then there's, there's another stage which is Allah Ta'ala Himself will uh, give uh, you know, the, the drinks to these people. وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا طَهُورًا Allah Ta'ala will give them these drinks. وَنَمَارِقُ مَصْفُوفًا and they will have uh, pillows that will be in rows. 
what's the benefit of saying that there will be you know pillows and things to recline on in, in rows that you will have company there will be more people with you right? you will have company and human beings love company you know they don't like to enjoy alone so Allah Ta'ala will not allow them to be alone in, in, in Jannah either Allah Ta'ala will give them their company of righteous people وَزَرَابِيُّ مَبْثُوثَ and lush carpets spread out Zarabi is an interesting word. Why? Because it's a borrowed word. Some of the words and languages develop. They sometimes borrow words from other languages as well. In the Arabic language, words are also borrowed and Arabized or Arabized, however you want to say it. And they're taken and they're used in the Arab language. So, for example, several several words like uh, Jahannam itself, the ulama discuss. Is it uh, you know from another language or not? Zarabi is one of those words. So Zarabi actually comes from, uh, there was a place in Azerbaijan which was known for making their carpets. And so whenever the Arabs referred to carpets, they would use Zarabi, this word. Right? So they knew about their carpets. So these, the best of carpets, right? And so this is, uh, this is uh, beautiful for us to understand that Allah Ta'ala speaking to the uh, Arabs in the language that they know. That explaining to them in, in, how, in, in how they know of what Jannah is. But however, uh, however, uh, Ibn Abbas, عنه, what does he say? That nothing in this dunya and in Jannah is the same except for the names. So although all these things are being mentioned here, the cups, the, the, the pillows, the, and they're a reality, they will be there. But how exactly they will be? What did the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say about Jannah? It's what the eye hasn't seen, the ear hasn't heard nor has it uh, uh, come through, you know, by the imagination of any person. So, the names may be the same, but the entities and reality of their essence may be completely different. Then Allah Ta'ala says in the last passage, and we'll complete the surah today, Allah Ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Do they who disbelieve not look with reflections at the form of camels, how wondrously they are created. So Allah Ta'ala is taking the journeying and traveling Arab and you know using him as an example that how could they not believe in Allah just by looking at his creation when they're traveling, just in the midst of when they're traveling. And the reality of every human being in this world is that we are all travelers. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi what did he say? You should actually live in this world that you are a traveler. So he said, uh, Allah Ta'ala says, then why don't they look at the camel, how wondrously it is created, how the camel, it, you know, withstands days, you know, upon the, uh, you know, without eating or without drinking, it will withstand days, how in the sandstorms, it is still able to move and navigate, even the, even the Bedouin on the camel has to close his eyes, but the camel has layers in his eyes so that it can continue traveling. وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ And then why doesn't the same traveler just look up in the sky? How majestically it is raised. وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ And at the mountains, how firmly they are set erect. How they are placed into the ground. Now over here, the nusib and nasb is the same word that was used for the facial expression of the disbeliever. Nasiba, that the... Uh, the the, the face of the, the person would be exhausted. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ And how firmly uh, and how smoothly the earth has been spread. Right? So this is pointing towards the why the people don't look at the signs of Allah Then the, the next ayah and the, the last passage goes back to the first ayah of the surah which was uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu has the account of the hereafter not reached you. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ So remind the people, O Prophet, of the blessings and oneness of their Creator. For you are but a reminder sent to them. And so this is similar to the, uh, the ayah in Surah Al-A'la, which was فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ فَعَتَ ذِكْرَى Remind if the reminder is beneficial. And the reminder is beneficial. So regardless of whether the people are taking the benefit or not, continue reminding. So over here as well, Allah Taala is then saying, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ This is a little different. Over there it was regarding the reminder, that the reminder is beneficial. 
Over here, it's regarding the entity of the Prophet ﷺ. That you yourself are a reminder. You are a reminder to the people. You are a beneficial reminder. And so continue reminding the people. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرِ And you are not meant to be controlling over them. Meaning you will not control their hearts. And this is the, uh, you know, the fundamentals of da'wah That when you call people, you call them and remind them to Allah wa ta'ala Then you don't argue with them You don't try to control them, right? At the end of the day, everyone has their own human volition They will act as they choose إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّى وَكَفَرْ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابُ الْأَكْبَرُ Yet one who turns away and disbelieves God will then torment him in the hereafter with the greatest torment so Allah Ta'ala says that He will punish them with the greatest punishment. And then Allah Ta'ala in the last two ayahs says, Inna ilayna yabahum, That indeed to us alone is their final return after, de after death. Meaning, they can never, uh, they can never escape. Right? So there's no escape. Everyone will return to Allah. ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ Then indeed upon us alone shall be their reckoning of everlasting recompense. So then the hisab, the account, uh, of those people will be also solely alone in the hands of Allah Ta'ala and no one can escape that account. I ask Allah Ta'ala that He grant us understanding of the Surah and the ability to practice and forgive us for any shortcomings in attempting to understand it.